بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته The blessings and favors from Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon us are countless However, one outstanding blessings from Allah سبحانه وتعالى and favor is the eyesight this is something mentioned in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty says to the human being, haven't we provided him with two eyes for the sighting? To observe the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that observation, you realize that there is a creator behind it. The one who created you and created everything around you. And you worship him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the other verse that Allah Almighty provided you with the hearing and eyesight and the mind and thinking, the ability, the heart, so that you will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you may thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the same, but he says that very few are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is true. We do not realize nor thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the countless blessings until we lose them. That's when you start realizing how important it was in your life. Imagine closing your eyes for one minute only. And imagine this is your whole world. This is the only thing you cannot see in the whole world. How will life be? Now you realize, alhamdulillah, every single moment in your life is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single eyesight, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people are deprived from it. So that is the concept. How to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very simple. The first one, realize that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attributed to Allah Almighty, not to you. You do not have anything in it. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created it for you and provided you with it. Second thing is do what Allah Almighty ordered you to do with them. Which is simply, look around you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Observe life around you. That is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. See the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In yourself, in the world around you, and in the whole universe. These are the words in the Holy Quran. Observe. And on the other hand, do not look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade for you. There are a few things that are forbidden to look. Most noticeably, the privacy of other people. Do not let your eye pry on others' privacy, something that is forbidden in Islam. Now with this simple concept, you have thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now to have more details, let us look at the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and how he utilized his eyesight to Remind him of Allah Almighty. Whenever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees any sight, he will immediately link that with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Remember Allah Almighty, thank him for whatever he has with him. We can take a few examples from that. When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to see the early light of the day, Al-Fajr, the true dawn, he will say, let anyone who hears be a witness that we praise Allah Almighty for his blessings. The countless blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. They say one of the keys to success is to always remind yourself of the blessings that you have. Which is true. And the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam earliest in every morning to remind himself of that. Remember, the moment you wake up, the merciful people usually do the exact opposite. The moment they wake up, they start thinking about what they do not have, what they are deprived of, their problems. So of course, the whole day is messed up for them. So the first thing the Messenger of Allah Sallam said, let anyone who hear be a witness that we praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for His blessings and how He favored us with countless blessings from Him. O oh Allah Almighty, be, be our guard, our companion. Protect that, these blessings for us. And increase your blessings upon us. Such a beautiful 
reminder and supplication at the same time. So you acknowledge what you have, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and protect them for you, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase His blessings and favors upon you. Very beautiful dua we should do every morning, like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Further more, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam observes any blessings, whatever it might be, he will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him for it. He will say, Alhamdulillah alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whose favor the righteous deeds are fulfilled. So he reminds himself of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we should utilize it in good things. And when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sees something or observes something that he dislikes, bad thing happen. Whatever it might be, what do you do? Says, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any condition or situation. Whatever the situation may the only thing I'm going to say is praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when such a thing happens? Such a thing happens because you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the best for you. So obviously, like when a doctor is giving you an injection, even if it is painful, even the medicine is distasteful, do you thank the doctor or not? Why do you thank the doctor? Because you trust that he is doing that for your own good. So if you truly trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will you say? You say the exact same thing. So the concept, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any situation, any kind. That is the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, if you see any bless, whatever that bless that be, whether it is a blessing upon you or a blessing upon somebody else, what do you do? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when someone of you sees any blessings upon someone or upon himself, he should, he should invoke blessings or barakah upon it. In the other verse uh, or narration, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, let him supplicate for its barakah, its blessings. How is that? There is already a favor from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and you pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless that person in it or increase the blessings of it for the person. Here, here the Messenger Sallallahu is teaching something to us that many Muslims do not do. They try to do it, but many of them do it in a wrong way. When you see your children, your house, your future, your certificates, your achievement, whatever good thing that you see, on yourself or somebody else. What do people usually say? MashaAllah. This is it. When you see that, what do you say? MashaAllah. True? Which is good. But that is not what the Messenger Sallallahu taught us. And some of them say, MashaAllah la quwata illa billah. Which is still good, but that is not the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is it? No. The Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to say, Tabarakallah. So if you want to say, say MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, or say Allahumma Barik. So you can continue, Allahumma Barik lahu, oh Allah Almighty, bless him for, it, for, for, for that, or bless that for him. You can do either narration. That is the dua that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to say. Many people do not realize that. That is why once a righteous person used to make a dua and he says, Oh Allah Almighty, bless for me my rizq. So somebody asked him, why do you make such a strange dua? Oh Allah Almighty, make barakah for me, blessings for me in my rizq, in my sustenance. Why don't you pray for sustenance? Pray for increase in sustenance. He says sustenance is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not worried about that. But the barakah, I need the barakah in it. I need the blessing in it. Which is true in life. You see many people, there are many people who re receive a huge amount of sum and rizq, whether it is in their own health, in their own bodies, in their own families and children, in their own income, whatever it might be. But they are not enjoying any of that. Isn't it? Some of them, sometimes by the end of the month, the whole salary is gone. It's not enough for them. What's wrong? Something is wrong. So it's not about the amount of the rizq that you have, it's about the blessing that you have. True or not? 
So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the survival, the survivor out of all his family was only one daughter. Fatima radiallahu anha, true? The descendants, descendants of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the world are countless from that single daughter. On the other hand, one of the enemies of the Messenger وسلم, at that time, he had with him 11 children. All of them were men and knight, brave men, fighters, well built. Among the elite, none of them had any children. All of them married multiple times, none of them had any child. The whole descendancy was not blessed and stopped there. So it's not about the Value. It's not about the amount. It's about the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts for that. You might have one child who is obedient to you, and this is more than enough. More than the whole world for you, isn't it? So that is the dua that you do. You do what type of dua? Dua for barakah, not about numbers. That is very important teaching from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing is any goodness that you see, especially at the beginning of it, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with barakah in it. This was the etiquette of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. When they see the very beginning of their uh, date, uh, palm trees, fruit, or their, their, their other fruits, they will take it to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will pray to Allah Almighty, O oh Allah Almighty, make barakah for us in our fruits. Make dua. You receive any amount of money, pray to Allah, Allah Almighty make barakah for me in this. Your child achieves something, memorize something, receive something, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for barakah and continues. So that is the etiquette of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, uh, the general guideline of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the other one is whenever he sees anything that is uh, good or worrisome, he will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goodness in it and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any harm in it. General dua, you usually do. Do it at every time. You enter a new place, new company, new people, a new agreement, whatever it might be. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah Almighty, I, I ask you from the goodness in it and I seek refuge with you from any harm or wrong or evil in it. General dua, very beautiful dua. Always do that dua with everything that comes across you. This way, inshallah, Allah Almighty will provide you with whatever goodness in it and protect you from any harm uh, in it. We need to conclude uh, very quickly with mentioning two points. The first one. One of the ways to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the eyesight is to use it in useful things. And the things that benefit more people. And the more people are benefited by that, the more reward there is in it for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned those who are protecting the, the, the Islamic world and the nation and their, their countries and people and property from enemies. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned there are two types of eyes that hellfire will never touch. An eye that cried out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And an eye that spent the night guarding for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the edge, at the front line, in front of the enemy, the protectors, the armies. And that is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this beautiful uh, glad tidings to them. And it's so coincided that we are, subhanAllah, uh, nearing the memory of the establishment of the United Arab uh, Forces. The United Arab Emirates Forces, uh, who are doing a great job here. One of the outstanding countries in the whole world with safety and security. This comes not by itself. There are huge efforts behind it. You have multiple nations, a uh, huge cosmo. And, and, and a very quick pace of life on all levels and yet alhamdulillah there is peace and security and stability such a great effort and great thing this glad tidings of the messenger وسلم, to those who spend the night protecting people and their property so that you will sleep well so that you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in peace and security and the second thing or the last thing we mentioned remember when we started that you need to protect your eyesight from har haram thing or forbidden things but sometimes a person might come across such things, intentionally or unintentionally. An intentional one, if you remove your eyesight immediately, Allah Almighty will not hold you responsible for that. The first eyesight. You go out, you go to a market, you walk around, you see a sight that is haram, forbidden for you. See a woman 
or somebody. So what do you do? If you remove your eyesight, move your eyesight away, there is no sin upon you in, on what you have seen. Clear? So the first sight is for you. The second one is against you. The first sight means you have the moment you see what is forbidden, you have to move your eyesight away. Clear? You are visiting someone, they open the door, there is somebody on the other side, etc. You move your eyesight away. No sin upon you in that. Clear? It does not mean, the first sight does not mean you continue looking. Like somebody is looking like this. Okay. What are you doing? He's not blinking. He said, this is the only first sight. So I'm finishing my first sight. No, that is not the concept. First sight, the moment you see, you move away. No sin upon you. Second thing, if, if there are such sins, get forbid, somebody is looking at something, listen, look, sometimes listening to the news or watching the news or reading newspapers, and there are many sites that comes to you. Some of them are forbidden for you to look at. True? With the blessings and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a glad tiding that anyone who performs good wudu, sincere wudu for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when he washes his face, the sins of his eyesight will move away, will be cleansed by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the drops of water. So you have multiple occasions every day so that inshallah when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will meet him sin free. So that is a very beautiful glad tiding from the Messenger uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless us with whatever ability that he gave us with our eyesight, with our hearings and with all our abilities and capability and grant us to utilize it in what is good for us and beneficial for us and others in this world and in the hereafter. The final point is what if somebody is missing that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him an eyesight. There are many people who lack this. For every favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are few who do not have it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended that. So that you will thank him for what you have. You realize that this is not a guaranteed thing. You could have been born without an eyesight, or you could have lost your eyesight at any moment in life, or God forbid you could lose it at any moment in your life. It's not a guaranteed thing. If it is a guaranteed thing, everybody will have it. But that is not the case. There are many who do not. The same for every other ability. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this as a test to all people. Test to those who are deprived from it and test to those who are not deprived from it. Those who are not deprived of it, what are you going to do? Are you going to appreciate it, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it and do good with it, beneficial thing for you or not? And for those who are deprived, here, let us listen to the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is narrating from what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Almighty said, when I, to, when I took the two beloved, the two beloved of my servant, two beloved, two eyesight, his two eyes. When I took the two beloved of my servant, and he is patient. The only compensation I can compensate him for is paradise. Subhanallah. I do not have any compensation for him. The only way I'm going to compose, compensate him for that is that I will grant him paradise. So as you see, the, 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 those who are deprived from that, it's a great test and trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huge one. And I, I, as we start, imagine, close your eyes for one minute and imagine that this is your world. Try to do anything. Go around, put on your clothes, try to go to the, uh, to relieve yourself, try to eat, try to drink, try to do anything in your life with your eyes closed. And that is when you start appreciating what is going on. Or try to listen to the news or to anything with your eyes closed. You'll imagine how life is for these people. It's a huge, huge test. But uh, if they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are patient to, uh, with, uh, with that trial and tribulation, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He promised, He is going to guarantee them paradise, inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to utilize all our abilities and capabilities in what is beneficial to us and everybody else. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.